The story begins on a rooftop, where we see a girl who receives a message, informing her that she has been accepted into the Imperial University. She is overjoyed by the news, but suddenly, someone pushes her off the roof, causing her life to flash before her eyes. She wakes up in another world, in the body of a girl named Rayleigh, and she is now in the world of a novel that she once read. She recalls someone calling out to her moments before she died, but she can't remember anything about them. A maid tells her that her meal is ready, so she heads to the dining room, where she joins her family. Rayleigh sits with them, thinking that they're like a perfect family, and we learn that her father was recently granted the title of Baron for his success in the oil industry. She feels blessed for being reborn into such a family, but she worries, knowing that Rayleigh is just a supporting character in the novel, and the heroine of the story is supposed to return from abroad after her friend dies, and she happens to be that friend. Although she knows her fate, she refuses to die a second time, and is determined to find a way to survive. She recalls that arsenic poisoning was the cause of her death in the novel, and that her fiancé Francis is the one who gives it to her. Rayleigh spends time with Francis, but she knows he is planning to kill her, so that he can try to take over the family business after her death. As Rayleigh walks around the garden with Francis, she thinks about their engagement, knowing that it was arranged by both families, so she can't just call it off on her own. She thinks she can change the story by making Francis want to dissolve their engagement, so Rayleigh suddenly tells Francis that she wants to break up, but Francis seems to completely ignore her. Rayleigh goes to a bookstore, where she buys a book about how to break up with a boyfriend, and we see them in a diner, where she deliberately pours her wine on Francis, claiming that her hand slipped, but he brushes it off, saying that it's okay. She sees a piano, telling Francis to play it, which he agrees to do, but she suddenly starts walking away, asking him to excuse her. But he doesn't mind, and Rayleigh wonders what is going on, because nothing from the book is working. The next day, we see them walking in the woods with a hunting rifle. Francis thinks this is her first time hunting, but we learn that she actually grew up watching her father hunt. She pretends that she doesn't know how to use a gun, firing it in his direction, and almost hitting his head. Rayleigh apologizes, thinking Francis will finally break up with her, but he still stays with her. The next day, Francis visits, but Rayleigh tells him that they do not have plans for the day, so he should just go home. He grabs onto her, asking her why she is suddenly talking that way, because he thought that they had a deep relationship, but Rayleigh tells him that he is mistaken, so he should just let go. But Francis starts looking down on her family, because they are only recent nobles, and he tells her that she can never escape their marriage. During a banquet, Rayleigh thinks about killing Francis, since it might be the only way to escape her fate. At that moment, she sees a duke named Noah, who is the protagonist of the novel, and we learn that in their kingdom of Camus, the old nobles wanted to prevent new nobles from rising, so they came up with a law to stop nobles from transferring their ranks. However, the royal seal needed to enact that law was stolen by someone, so the old nobles try to come up with other ways to suppress the new nobles, while Noah rises to power. It is revealed that Noah is from the royal family, and he is the eldest son of the queen, but he was removed from the line of succession because of a scandal. Rayleigh realizes that Noah's rank is higher than Francis, so he might be able to help her out, and since she has read the novel, she can use her knowledge to convince him to help her. She starts following Noah around, while a man named Jake tells Francis that he shouldn't leave his fiancée alone, because their client knows that his relationship with Rayleigh hasn't been going well. So Jake warns him to do his job or he is going to die. So Francis starts looking for Rayleigh, wondering why she seems like a completely different person, and a guy points him to the garden, where Rayleigh introduces herself to Noah, proposing a deal which involves the royal seal. This catches Noah's attention, so he wants to know about the deal, but before she could tell him about it, Francis suddenly calls out to her. She sees this as the perfect opportunity, so she goes to Noah, telling Francis that she now has a relationship with him, while Noah plays along, making Francis confused. A servant is about to take her home, but Francis grabs onto her, and Rayleigh tells him that she wants to call off the engagement. Francis becomes upset, insulting her family, but Noah interferes, telling the servant to take her home. Francis tells Noah that Rayleigh is his fiancée, but Noah says he no longer has the right to call her that. Francis walks away, claiming that he won't sit quietly and let it happen, 
while Noah orders his associate to investigate Rayleigh and have someone watch Francis in case he tries anything. The next day, a maid knocks at her door, informing her that Noah is in their mansion, so she dresses up as she thinks about asking for his help to break her engagement. Rayleigh greets Noah, claiming she is honored to see him again, and Noah says he really wanted to meet her. Meanwhile, the maids are gossiping about Noah, because he doesn't usually entertain women, but he went to the mansion with a bouquet. A girl named Elma asks Rayleigh why Noah came to their mansion, so she explains that she met him at the banquet, and he might prove to be a great partner for her. Elma thinks there is romance involved, but we learn that Rayleigh just sees him as a business partner, so she goes to a bookstore, where she buys a book about how to write a contract. That evening, her parents ask her why Noah visited her, and Rayleigh tells them that she wants to break off her engagement with Francis, claiming that she doesn't love Francis the same way she loves Noah. But Rayleigh knows that this won't be good for her father's business, so she isn't expecting her father to just accept it. However, her father tells her that he understands, explaining that she is a good daughter, and they only want what's best for her. This makes Rayleigh feel disgusted with herself, because she knows she isn't really their daughter. She goes to Noah's mansion, where she greets him, but he wants to skip the formalities, wanting to know about the royal seal. Rayleigh tells him that they both know where it is, revealing that Noah is the one who has the royal seal, and that he has been pretending to lead the old nobility against the new nobles, because that's what the royal family wants. This is a secret kept by the royal family, but thanks to her novel, she also knows about it. Noah asks her if she's being serious, saying that he's no longer interested in having a discussion with her, and he tells her to leave. She tries revealing other secrets that no one should know, but he still tells her to go. So she starts walking away, trying to look confident, but she is actually worried because she's running out of options, thinking it's the end of the road. But at that moment, she notices that there is only one king on the chess board, and the number of chess pieces don't add up so she concludes that it is similar to the situation in their kingdom. Rayleigh tells Noah to move the bishop on the chessboard, knowing that the bishop represents the Gale family, and revealing that there is a struggle to see which of the two sons will become the next head of the family. She proceeds to leave, but Noah suddenly stops her, saying he is now willing to negotiate. Noah goes through the contract she prepared, while Rayleigh is worried, because she knows that Noah is more dangerous than Francis. He asks her why she wants him to pretend to be her fiancé, and Rayleigh claims that she has heard a rumor that Francis wants to kill her, so she wants to end her engagement with him. Noah wants to know where she gets her information from, but she claims that her source has already died, so she can't reveal his identity. She wants Noah to sign the contract, saying that she has valuable information that other people could use to bring him down, but he puts the paper down, thinking that nobody would believe her anyway. Rayleigh tells him that he only needs to do it for six months, and she is surprised as he immediately signs it, telling her that she will also need to do her part as his fiancé. After a few days, she regrets making a contract with Noah, as she appears in the newspaper and learns that Francis's family is demanding a huge compensation for breaking the engagement. But she doesn't think much about it, since the biggest concern of hers is the knight assigned to her named Adam, who is acting as Noah's observer. She remembers him from the novel as a skilled child soldier, but the royal family stopped using child soldiers, and he was hired by Noah. The maids think that Noah assigned Adam to protect her because he really loves her, but she knows that Adam will kill her if she does anything funny. She asks Adam if he will be her guard when she starts staying at Noah's place, and we learn that during the contract signing, Noah told her to move in with him, because she will need to receive training as a candidate for marriage into his family. Elma is worried about Rayleigh, because Adam looks scary, but Rayleigh tells her not to judge Adam based on his looks, and Elma gives her a bag of chocolates. They go to a garden, where she sees her sister Rose, who wishes for her to have a good marriage with Noah. She lets go of a balloon, but it gets stuck on a tree. Rose wanted to reach the sky so that the gods would grant her wish, but Rayleigh tells her not to worry about the balloon, giving her some chocolates. At that moment, Adam slices at the tree, allowing the balloon to fly away. They thank Adam, and Rose gives him a chocolate. Noticing that he likes chocolates, she gives him the whole bag, thinking that he never got to enjoy his childhood since he was a soldier at such a young age, and the next day, she proceeds to the Duke's mansion, where she will start living with Noah. But that's where this video ends. If you want to see more of this series let me know in the comments below. 
Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.